hello everyone. Um, I'm Edward Froster. And I'm Paul Wilkinson and we're back together again for our, our dialogues that we do mm -hmm. more frequently these days. Um, yes. Where we talk about different topics and it's just lovely to be here in Eddie's Shrine. It's Thank you. It's a beautiful you. place. No, wonderful to be here. I'm lost in all these books. Mm. Uh, and you've got a few with you. I have got a few books with me. Well, um, got a few on the shelves and everything, but um, in my hands I have two Dantes. One's a very old um, Dante book and one's more of a modern translation. Uh, both wonderful. I prefer this translation um, to this one, but this, this book's superb. It's got wonderful illustrations in as well. So um, <clears throat> I, think, I think about a book, the book itself, the physical thing about a book, is that it's got history attached it. So just holding that, you just, you just wonder about who's held it before, um, who conceived of this book, the idea for the structure of this edition of Dante. Mm, yes, absolutely. How they got the illustrator um, to do the illustrations, what the illustrator thought when he was illustrating this book. Um, just there's so much about it and also the, the history of this physical book. You know, it was it was made in a bookshop. Somebody owned it, and then perhaps they took it to a second-hand bookshop. Yeah. And somebody bought it, etc., etc. And and this was um, my mum and dad's book, so this is now my book. Yeah. The smell you get as well, isn't it, in a second-hand mm. bookshop as well? Which, yeah. Um, it's kind just, of... Look at that going. Oh, you smell. Oh it. yes, it has. It's got a smell. smell. We don't have smell of vision here, but <clears> if you could smell it, it's. Uh... It's like a, it's like a it's like a peaty whiskey. Yeah, that's a good description. Yeah. 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 Do you want to read the first? Can you find the first? Or do you want to? Are you going to read the other translation? Well, the translations are, are so interesting mm. and, and different. But let's um, let's find this one. So this is the book. This is who's it's it? It's the Mars Mars translation. Mark Muser. Mark Muser. Is it Muser? No, I think it's Muser. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is a translation I've got, but I did have a few others as well. Mm. This is really good, isn't it? This one. Yeah, Actually. I think I think so. I don't know if people know much about. Might not know much about Dante, but he's well worth spending some time with. Yeah, very much. So. Maybe seven hundred year old. This poem, I forget exactly, but roughly around that. So around shall, that shall I read? Um, shall I just read the first few lines? Yeah, <coughs> please do. That would be lovely. Do you want me to read it, or do you want to read it? No, you read it. You read it nicer than me. Okay. Well, you, you haven't heard me yet. You will do. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so this is um, Canto One. Midway along the journey of our life, I woke to find myself in a dark wood, for I had wandered off from the straight path. How hard it is to tell what it was like, this wood of wilderness, savage and stubborn, the thought of it brings back all my fears. A bitter place, death could scarce be bitterer, but if I would show the good that came of it, I must talk about things other than the good. And he goes on and on, on and on. Mm -hmm. It's quite amazing, really, because of the wood itself is a wood, but also it means a lot more than Absolutely. just the physical wood itself. And we all find ourselves <laughs> midway through the journey of our lives, yeah. lost, looking at looking out at society and and maybe not seeing the seeing a different world inside this one. Mm. And yeah, so he's you know he's he's come to a point in his life where he, he's a bit lost, and so mm. he wanders into this into this wood, and it's all strange to him, and he doesn't really know what's in there, and there's all these wild beasts as well, and um, he's scared, he's frightened, mm. and he doesn't know where mm. to go. He has to make his own pathway, doesn't he? Yeah, this is what this whole book is about. This yeah. whole poem is great poem. So it just it's just a fantastic start. Already the imagery imagery from it springs to my mind as an artist. I can see him walking through this yeah. wood. I can, I can think, oh gosh, I'd love to illustrate that. And your favourite illustrations, so we both love Blake who never finished them, uh, and the other... Uh, Dory. Dory. Beautiful. Yeah, he was stunning. He, he did a lot of... Um, well, they're not, they're not pen and ink because he etched them, but the black and white. Absolutely and, stunning. Um, and Blake did. He did. Um, I think he did. Was it watercolor? Yeah. Um, so his. There's some he, pen maybe, but I can't remember. I don't want to say that there is at the end of that book, but they may well be. But generally, they're unfinished, aren't they? A lot of them. Yeah, they are. They are very much so. Yeah. 
So, so I mean, really, what, what we've just done, we just, it's not so much that we picked up Dante, we picked up a book because there's something um, tangible and beautiful and evocative about a physical book and just to hold it, to read it, to mm. smell it, to caress it, to see that it's your constant companion. Yeah, to take it with you wherever you are travel, which is what I do. Exactly. In the supermarket, I'm opening this book I'm reading at the moment because <laughs> I, I just don't mind the cues, you know, I've got my book. Yeah, yeah. And you get some looks of, uh, <laughs> I think, pure astonishment. Or maybe actually, oh, I might do that next time I come, actually. Yeah, maybe I should bring a book. Or... So a book is much better than uh, an iPhone, isn't it? Yeah, or, or or a Kindle. I mean, I can see the uses for those if you're travelling and all that, but there's something so beautiful about a book. And I love visiting second-hand bookstores and seeing what gems you might find. Yeah, exactly. I've just said to Eddie, I, I found an old copy of uh, Wordsworth's The Prelude. It's stunning. It's a stunning book. It's mm. beautiful, just like that one. No, you've got, you've got something. Well, yeah, so, since we're at Eddie's and we were talking about these things, I suppose the, to some people they may be... be uh, old, 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 as worldly, old time sort of things to some yeah. people, might they? Yeah. You know, some people, some some students I know don't know what CDs are if they're sort of under a certain age. They're just, just, not, they're just not aware of them. So it's lovely that you shared your book, and I'm looking down here and seeing all Eddie's uh, records, and I just picked this one up. Sibelius, the Seventh Symphony, mm. and I, it, it, it just, it, it just caught my attention straight away because. It's, well, to me, it's one of the great symphonies. It's a very, very short work. It's not long at all. It's quite a short work. It can be over and done in sort of 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's the last symphony that Sibelius wrote. But, but, but it, it's on uh, record. Yeah, it's on record, yeah, yeah. And there's something lovely uh, when I first... So I, I had records when I were a child, and then, of course, CDs came into fashion. And then all our records seemed to disappear. My dad must have taken them to the charity shop. Then when I got back into records, I have a friend of mine, Stuart, and he showed me how to take the records out properly. Because I used to just grab my fingers on it. He was like, no, 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 no. It's like, no. Nah. Then he started to, to show me how to, ah, to take them out. It was wrapped in that, it? Yeah, it was wrapped in this, which, of course, it would have been paper. And if you're looking at this now, you, you've got to be careful. You've got to put your hands. This is Stuart showing me this, and I follow this. Fingers under the middle, uh -huh. thumb on the edge, so you bring it, out, yeah. bring it out like this. Don't be, don't be putting your fingers on it. Look at that, the music section to that's absolutely it's beautiful. It's like absolutely art, beautiful, like. yeah. Look at that. So it's a bit. I mean, like, so you got the record, and you got the, you got the book. I know this sound um, seems a bit. What we, what are we doing here? But it's so tangible. It, it's here. It's solid. It feels yeah. like something. You, you treasure it, don't you? You feel. Oh, and it's an effort, isn't it? We're a record yeah. player. A record. You've got to put it on the record player. You know, there's a, there's a bit mm. of time to putting it on, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can. can't just like skip a track. <laughs> well, you can, <laughs> but it's very difficult to pick up. Yeah, and you've got to get up, of course. Yeah. Yes. But the yeah. not to get geeky about bin the the sort of the quality of the audio, but it's just if it's a good press in the record, you 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 just the closest you'll be to what it sounded like in the concert hall or in mm -hmm. the studio. If it's a good pressing, there are times where where you now have you know, famous albums that they don't have the master tapes anymore, so the pressing's from a CD or an inferior copy. Uh -huh. And there you're not getting any any depth of quality, so you should be cautious of that. But if you know it's from the original tapes and all these ones that Eddie has, I can see because of their age, are going to have just such a depth of quality. Not just the overtones, but the undertones and everything else. And, and, it, and it is, and part of the listening to that, of course, it's the quality of the sound and the recording, etc., and when they were pressed. But also, it, it's the effort of putting the record on, isn't it? And looking at the um, the envelope, the, the sleeve, etc., for the information. Yeah. Depends what album you've got. It could, I mean, that, that's, that was quite simple. There wasn't much information. No, there. Just a no, bit in the back, but some of them... But there's all the story about how he wrote it. Yeah. So, um, so there's something that maybe slows you down or, or, or connects you deeply with the moment of listening rather than you just putting something on and it's you know like so digital music there's nothing wrong with that but no it's no. very fast yeah. isn't it, it it's, 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 it's instant isn't it yeah you don't have to really put any um effort into putting the music on no with a record you've got to shuffle around find it bring it out put it onto the record play it on the turntable Press start, the needle comes down, you might get a crackle, you might need to clean it first, etc. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, you know, there's, 
there's a little ritual before you start to actually listen. Yeah. And that ritual perhaps makes you pay more attention mm. to it and listen perhaps more. Yeah. And then, you know, perhaps the same with a book too. You, you, you have to pick it up. It's got your bookmark in, say, you look for a few bit, you might have a sniff of it, mm. something like that. And there's something about that, isn't there? And and and, and book you kind of, you might look a bit ahead, check out you might have some illustrations and you might think, oh look at that illustration. Oh I must see another illustration. So there's you know, and then you touch in, touch it, very tactile. So that, that again, maybe the, the two are similar in that sense. Yeah, it I think so. Takes a bit of time and you know, awareness and attention. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think particularly with Sibelius as well, it's just resonating with me now because I've put it out that, you know, he kept promising the Eighth Symphony. Mm. I didn't even do the story and then, of course, eventually he kept saying it was nearly ready, didn't he? And, but his wife said he just seemed down and unhappy and then one day she heard a mighty ban and he'd thrown the whole thing on the fire. Yeah. You know, that comes to mind with this record now. And so when I listen to that and I put that on, you just... You think this is the last okay there was another couple of pieces after that but he kind of stopped for the last 30 years of his life and i didn't essentially write anything a few arrangements but nothing else really so so the story of that um resounds in it, it yeah and the, the myth of it is built Absolutely. around that isn't there so but yeah it that's that's lovely i mean that's it's mm. tragic he didn't do the eight but Maybe and then we found good. some snippets of things that people like one. Well, it might not have been. There's some snippets of one and a half minutes, and I've heard them, and they're tantalising because they sound right. beautiful. But we don't know. They found them on, you know, in his papers and things. But the, we, we, yeah, we're just saying that. And of course, now records are really they have become they're coming back, you know, yeah. in the whatever coming back means. I, I think it's just the, it's the sense of having objects that's, that are real that have a life of their own, have a history, and rather than them you know, being obscure or invisible, that they're there. So you you, 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 you like build that. a connection with them, you build yeah. a friendship. You see you? them, like I see all your spines in all the books. Yeah. Yeah, so the, it becomes some, something you know, someone you know, it become real in a mm, way. Like yeah. the records too and the history and, you know, so anyhow. Yeah, cool. I'll be straight to my bookcase when I get on. Oh, right. Nice. Happy reading, sir. Thank you. Right.